How's it going, y'all? This is Shockwave 48 here. Welcome back to another video. And today is about time we get the official release spoilers of My Hero Academia Chapter 422. This one's this one. This chapter is pretty pretty good, I should say, because I looked at the, the pages on Twitter and I saw the little previews of the chapters, and it looks absolutely phenomenal, great, and I love it. So without further ado, guys, let's jump right in and see what this chapter. It's going on here. Let's, let's do this. All right, so we got the 422 spoilers, and we are coming into the final sequence of the series here. I know I've been saying that a lot, but this is definitely the final sequence. Because Izuku is for sure going for his final attack here, and he's actually, like, landing it, kind of. I mean, we'll get into it, but a lot of awesome classic horikoshi sequences in this chapter so the title is on the last page and rukazu doesn't want to spoil it immediately but we'll just skip to that right now because the title of the chapter is izuku midoriya rising that of course goes into the other characters that we've seen throughout this final arc where they get their own chapter where it says their name and then rising and then of course it ends on the main character izuku so the chapter begins with Aoyama falling behind because All For One's tentacles destroyed a piece of the ground, but he tells Deku to keep running. Aizawa tries asking Shirakumo to open another portal, but realizes that he has no strength left to use his quirk. So that's interesting how Aizawa is asking Shirakumo. I don't know if this is Rukasu referring to Kurogiri as Shirakumo, or he is actually straight up being referred to as Shirakumo by Aizawa in this chapter, which means that there could have been a breakthrough. We still don't know what's fully going on with that yet. But as for the other characters here, we saw them come through the Avengers Assemble portals in the previous chapter. So all of the remaining significant characters are here taking on all for one. And the heroes keep attacking. Attacking, including Mawata Fuwa, the second year girl, but the attacks don't work on All for One. Aizawa tells them all to clear a path for Deku to reach Shigaraki, and at the same time, All for One prepares to use the full release of all quirk factors. All for wow. One says it will be different from the time that he used this attack against Bakugo because he's no longer overcome by emotions. He's going to condense all of his power and release it. He shoots a laser at Deku, but Hagakure reflects it, so this is insane. Okay. First of all, we were talking about Perfect this timing. previous chapter. Like, All for One keeps going back to releasing all of his quirk factors at once. It's never worked for him. Literally, every time he uses this, it he fails. He actually winds up losing when he does it. So it's like, I don't know why he keeps thinking that it's going to be different. But then again, this is All for One. And even in his emotionless emo phase that he's going through right now, he is still incompetent. But it still looks pretty cool. Like, he makes this big... Uh, organic looking uh, laser cannon thing and somehow Hagakure is reflecting it like uh, ostensibly the strongest beam in the world uh, at least produced by quirks is just being reflected by uh, Hagakure of all people yes I know that that's how her quirk works she like reflects light and that's how she becomes invisible and we've also seen her reflect lasers and lights and beams throughout the series but come on this is like coughing baby versus atomic bomb level of uh, shenanigans going on here but first guys do you want to get cash back on purchases that you're going to make anyway well you can do that with the upside app which mm. is free and it gets you cash back on daily essentials like gas groceries and dining there are over 100,000 gas stations grocery stores and restaurants on the upside app ensuring that cash back is always just around the corner. I like using it on things like getting gas at Bolero. Also, there's this really cool brunch place called Two Hands that I can claim an offer through Upside on, which is amazing. And yes, it's real cash back. No confusing rewards, points, or credits. Just actual money you can transfer straight to your bank account. Top upsiders are making as much as $300 a month. To find out how much you can earn, click the link in the description to download Upside and use code ZONIN to get an extra $0.25 cents back for every gallon on your first tank of gas or scan the QR code here to claim this offer. Thanks, guys. Momo builds a railgun and Kaminari charges it with his electricity to fire it all for one 
but he blocks it. All for One launches more black tentacles and Deku is about to punch them with one for all, but several other students destroy them and tell him not to waste his energy yet. So yeah, this is like a really cool sequence. It's unfortunate that it's not being spread out a little more. I think it's kind of being condensed to one page maybe, but Momo building a freaking rail gun with her quirk and then Kaminari charging it. Like, I wish we could have gotten really cool sequences like this throughout the series. I mean, granted we did, but man, this is like so much potential to this like team up stuff. Not only just Momo and Kaminari, but like the other combos that we could have gotten with Momo using her quirk to make something and then like two other students or another student use uh, their quirks to aid in it or power it up or supply ammo to it in some way. But they're also trying to get Izuku to get to the prime moment because he essentially only has like one shot left. I mean, they didn't say that, but in the previous chapter, it was stated that Izuku only has quote unquote embers left of one for all the same way that All Might did in season three before he landed the United States smash and all for one kind of the same scenario with the Zuku so they're trying to set him up for the prime moment of landing that final shot Shoji holds Deku with one of his arms and Suyu with her tongue Suyu's family and the girl Shoji saved in the past are watching the broadcast and see them fighting the two of them throw Deku forward and he finally manages to call Suyu Suyu chan that's a nice little moment there. <laughs> Hiroshima and Ashido block a big attack while their friends from middle school are watching and shouting their names. All for One doesn't understand why these heroes who can barely move won't die. He then remembers what he said about Deku in the messages about him being useless. All for One finally understands that Deku's weakness is something that All Might didn't have, and that's what makes his friends get up over and over again. Gentle makes him a trampoline, Death Arm says that he can do it, <laughs> and Dokoyami wishes him good luck from Gunga, and Ida takes his hand. So I like the others supporting him, of course, in their own ways. You know, gentle. They're really working together to clear a path for him. But then we have like Death Arm, like where his like last moment in the series is essentially just saying like, "Yeah, you can do it, Izuku." Same thing for like Tokoyami. Like Tokoyami's last moment here is just like, well, "Good luck, bro." And it's like, yeah, you know, I know that they had their moments, but why can't just everyone be here to do something at least tangible? All for One tries to use another attack, but the hole in his hand starts to bleed and he gets confused. We see the U.S. pilots tending to All Might's wounds, and he says that seeing Deku running that day was what allowed him to do the same. It was at that moment that Deku became... So the hole in All for One's hand is bleeding. More Christ analogies here for All for One. It's always kind of been there, especially with the hole in the hand, you know, that old thing. But the bleeding, uh, other than uh, being analogous, I suppose is uh, representing maybe Shigaraki slash Tanko fighting back from the inner consciousness because that's why he put that hand on his mouth in the first place. Like, after all, for one, uh, seemingly killed Shigaraki's consciousness, although we know that that's probably not fully the case, he, and he took him over, he momentarily, like... Uh, felt a, a voice or something within his head and he was like you know why is that still there shut up you know i'm paraphrasing but he said something like that so i'm sure mm. that's what's happening here because we still do need to have that resolution with the body that izuku is facing right now the shigaraki standing before him that all for one is controlling like one one way or another that needs to become tenko and how it happens you know your guess is as good as mine. Could just be some random Deus Ex quirkery. Uh, it's not going to be Eri because the, they already went to that well. Maybe, I don't know, Izuku does something. Melissa wishes Deku good luck. And in the next panel, we see Roddy and Pino doing the same. Ida tells Deku that now he understands what Uraraka meant on their first day of UA about the nickname Deku, making her think of do your best. So this is pretty cool. Finally, Melissa okay. is being a I haven't girl. seen her in a while. Maybe we did see Melissa and Rody? in the manga before when we got introduced to Izuku's Red Gauntlet. But now that we're actually seeing her is pretty cool. I do like Melissa because she comes from the first My Hero movie, Two Heroes, which is my favorite battle manga movie. Really incredible. If you guys haven't watched it, you should check it out. She's the daughter of David Shield, who's like All Might's friend from America. And she's also like a super wizard on, on making support gear and stuff. And then, of course, Roddy and Pino, uh, which is like his quirk manifestation. Roddy was like uh, Izuku's boyfriend in the third movie, which was not as good as the first, but still pretty good, worth a watch for sure. 
So it's cool to see these movie characters uh, kind of canonized, I guess you could say. We see Ochako in the helicopter with Pixie Bob as she opens her eyes and whispers, you could do it. The US president orders all of their heroes to be sent to Japan and we see the panels of different characters saying, do your best, Eri Kota, Tsukuchi. Okay, so a little too late, but finally the U.S. President uh, Biden <laughs> is sending all of our heroes uh, to Japan. I'm glad Lorak is okay. He raises his arm and sees an image of Deku running towards the sky. He then continues, on that day, you became my greatest hero. The last spread shows Inko cheering on her son while Deku lands a punch on All for One. And that's where the chapter ends. So yeah, he's landing that punch, like I said in the beginning, on All for One. This is essentially his final attack. Uh, I don't know what it's going to become. Could be like United States Smash. Could be the world of Smash. Or it could just be Smash. You know, that I guess that's an option. Just straight up Smash. Maybe could be that. Be, I don't know. Hopefully this becomes something pretty grand because the final panel looks pretty cool. But, you know, I'll go more into this in my full review for the chapter once it is released. Hopefully I'll have it out like that. All right. What did I say? It's a pretty good chapter. Although it's not quite done yet. I mean, we can't say that's the end of the battle. No, it has to be... The battle has to be over, like, eventually. But this this is actually pretty intense to see because everyone is getting making some space for Deku. And even though that's kind of surprising, everyone's doing their part to keep him, you know, to make sure he actually goes and attack all, you know, Shigaraki. And, <laughs> and, and like I said before, I'm really happy that Uraraka is okay because she was battling to the death with Toga earlier, like a few other chapters before. But... She's 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 hanging in there, and I'm glad. Um, one thing's for certain: this final attack that Deku's doing, I don't know if it's finished or not. I mean, I'm glad he landed the punch on all for one, but it's not over till it's over. So if I had to predict what's going to happen next chapter, I think he's probably, possibly going to get a new quirk, or he might get his quirk back at the end of the chapter, or maybe all for one's going to keep attacking Deku or something, or who, who knows something. A miracle might happen to Deku because I can feel it. I can feel that he might get a new quirk upgrade or he might get his old quirk back. It depends on whether whether or not it might just happen. Who knows? Because the character the director of this uh, manga chapter is saying that Deku might be quirkless and other people saying that he might get a new quirk. Who knows? But we can't. I, I can't see that happening. I can't see court on um, Deku being quirkless for the rest of his life because he worked too hard to become the world's greatest hero, and that's what he's trying to reach out to become a pro hero. So probably cha chapter two hundred twenty-three. I think I predict that Deku might face him one last time for an ultimate attack with his new power awakening. Who knows? But I'm pretty sure he will if that's the case. And uh. So I like this chapter. I like it a lot. I can't wait for the next chapter because I don't see any updates saying we're going to be on, on break. So we'll just have to wait and see. All right, guys. That's it for today's video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later. Peace.